along with me. It's news time. Thank you, Auto Riot, for the gift sub there to Worrell14 just as we came in here. Welcome, everyone. It is time for Clyde Plays News. My name's Clyde, and this is the news. Our top story today is about some new ships, and so is our second to the top story. So let's jump over to that one first, and then we'll come back and talk about those other new ships here in a little bit. First things first, the Commonwealth cruiser Brisbane is coming to World of Warships. This is a tier 10 ship that is based on the Minotaur, but has HE. Now, many of you way back in the day, may if you're old timers, if you've been warshipping for a very long time, may remember legends, rumors, whisperings, if you will, about a HE Minotaur, which was considered overpowered and nonsensical. That could be what Brisbane is, or Brisbane could come out and wind up having a reload nerf that makes it a little bit more balanced. We just don't know. We do have some specs in this article, and if you're watching this later on YouTube, we'll include those in the description below. Um, and, uh, and if you're interested in this afterwards, uh, I can post them into Twitch chat as well. Check out the old Brisbane though. I think she looks pretty good. You know, I like to hassle Wargaming for their monochromatic camouflages. And don't get me wrong, I love a classy monochromatic camouflage, but this one actually looks really nice. It's got the darker gray along the bottom, lighter gray up here for the superstructure. I'm kind of excited about this ship. And uh, it's one of a very small number of ships. In fact, I think is Vampire 2 the only other tier 10 uh, Commonwealth ship in the, in the game? I think it might be. If I'm wrong, let me know in chat. But check this thing out. It says it's a project for a light cruiser developed at the end of World War II that would have had powerful and advanced AA defenses with 10 quick firing 152 millimeter guns. Brisbane resembles Minotaur, but has access to HE shells and a reinforced torpedo armament that can launch a larger number or greater number of torpedoes. The torpedoes themselves have a higher range and spread than those of its British counterpart. Now you guys may remember Minotaur has a 10 kilometer torpedo range. So these will be longer than that. We can check the, uh, the details down below. A 12 and a half kilometer range on Brisbane's torpedoes. 65 knots with a oh, two minute, 11 second reload time. Uh, 43,000 hit points. Pretty, pretty standard. 9% fire chance. What's the reload on the main battery? Reload time, four and a half seconds. I don't know if this will, if this will remain. <laughs> I feel like this is a ship that is going to see some adjustment and test. That said, here is Brisbane. Uh, 10 guns, 9% fire chance, four and a half second reload. Mm, that smells like a potential future nerf, but I'm excited to see it. Look at this Sigma though, 2.05, but with slow velocity. So high arcing shells that land where you click on them. The next ship we want to talk about here is the Joshua Humphreys, a super destroyer for the US, uh, US Navy line. This looks like it has the turrets off of the Fort Sherman. Its main armament consists of a powerful 127 millimeter post-war dual purpose mounts, dual purpose meaning AA as well as main battery. Um, and it's complemented with two five tube torpedo launchers. Joshua Humphreys is faster and more agile, um, I guess, than gearing uh, with six main battery guns. So these are dual barrel turrets, three turrets, dual barrels. Uh, with a burst fire alternative mode. So it's gonna have a funny button, an F key, in addition to its increased fire rate. This grants a temporary bonus to the HE shell's damage and chance to set fire. Now that I think is a new thing. We've seen buffs to accuracy. We've certainly seen burst fire, but a buffed chance to catch fire is pretty interesting in that that's new. Now I know a lot of people don't like those funny buttons. Um, this may be more reason for that attitude. Uh, the torpedo armament has a high range, but not the greatest speed and damage. We'll take a look at those numbers here in a moment. Um, Joshua Humphreys was a naval ship designer who designed some of the early frigates uh, way back in the age of sail for the uh, for the U.S. Navy. So kind of a cool historical figure that they've pulled together for this as well as in terms of the ship's namesake. 23,700 hit points, six guns, 12.1 kilometer range, which is pretty standard. 1,800 damage is pretty normal. 
for a US uh, main battery gun. 2.0 Sigma, 792 meters per second. Let's take a look at those torpedoes. 70,900. Damage, which is pretty good, not the highest damage. 16.5 kilometers, very similar to what we see with gearing torps, and the speed looks pretty similar to gearing torpedoes as well at 66 knots. I don't know that that's exactly the same, but it's pretty dang close. Um, smoke generator, damage control party, uh, no heal, but uh, damage control party smoke and engine boost defensive AA fire. Very standard American destroyer load out there. Our next ship is the Kunming, an evolution of the Summers class um, of the U.S. line. Now, Summers is different from the Allen M. Sumner class, which is what Yu Yang is. Yu Yang is a Sumner. This is a Summers evolution. Taking a look at this, she follows the existing researchable Pan-Asian destroyers. The main difference between this ship and the Yu Yang is an additional main battery turret. Does that mean it's a four, four turret ship? It looks like there might be two turrets out back. Um, a longer firing range and more powerful torpedo tubes. Smoke generator with a large number of charges and so on. Let's just grab the stats and take a good look at them. 20,000 hit points. Four by two, so that's eight guns, 127 millimeters with a range of 13.4. This could be a pretty decent little gunboat. 1800 damage, 2100 damage for HE and AP, again, pretty standard. 792 meters per second, 2.0 on the Sigma. Taking a look at the torpedoes, um, damage of 18,800, 13 and a half kilometers with almost 70 knots, 69, nice knots of speed for the torpedoes. Damage control party, surveillance radar, just like you expect with the other uh, uh, with the other Pan-Asian destroyers. Engine boost and a torpedo reload booster, again, like we expect with the Pan-Asian destroyers. So that is Kunming, Joshua Humphreys, and Brisbane, new ships coming to the game. This next dev blog article has a whole bunch of random stuff in it. We're gonna go over it. Probably some items a little quicker than others. Let's see what's going on. Uh, the dockyard is coming up. I know we've been interested in what is coming up for the dockyard, and I think a lot of people suspicioned that Admiral Schroeder was going to be our dockyard ship, and I can't remember if this has been announced in any other way or not. Uh, but Admiral Schroeder is going to be our dockyard. That is a Tier 9 German cruiser, kind of one of the large cruiser kind of concepts that we've got. It's a 30-phase dockyard. You'll be able to buy phases in the doubloon, for doubloons like we often can, and uh, in total, you'll you can progress through 26 of the 30 phases um, by completing missions, and you'll have to pay for four phases. Uh, this is a picture of the Schroeder here with its new uh, dockyard camo. It looks pretty good, but honestly, I think the regular Schroeder camo, camo that we've seen already is actually kind of better looking, if you ask me, although this one is not the worst. This is what everybody wants to talk about, the festive rewards. Now, Wargaming does this for us every year for the last several years. Let's take a look. It says, in update 0.11.11, Players will receive the additional or traditional New Year's rewards for battle results on all of their ships starting from Tier 5 on up. Just like during the World of Warships 7th anniversary uh, celebrations, players with 100 or more ships in their port will be able to receive multiple rewards in one battle. That's cool. We really liked this. I hope you guys did too. If you're a player with more than 100 ships and you took advantage of this, I thought this was really great because it allowed us to relax and enjoy the birthday event. It'll allow us to relax and enjoy the holiday event as well and get a lot more uh, of those rewards in a single battle. Tier five through seven ships will earn you 750 coal. Tier eight through nine ships will earn you 75 steel. And tier 10 ships will earn you one New Year's gift certificate. Super ships will earn you 500 research points. Is this the first year when we've gotten something for super ships that was different from tier 10s? I think maybe we had super ships last year. If I'm wrong on that, let me know in chat, guys. But I think that's pretty cool that we'll get some research points for having super ships. New Year's certificates are a temporary resource, just like last year, that we can exchange for. Now, this is interesting. I don't remember if we could exchange them for credits last year or not. Uh, but you can exchange them for 375,000 credits or for any of three types of Santa's gift containers. You can get a big a container, a big gift container, or a Santa's mega gift container for one, three, or five certificates, respectively. Uh, we did a bunch of math last year, and we proved out that if your goal is to get more ships, the mega gift containers were the best deal, and they have been for multiple years. We will double check this math again this year, and I'll put out a video probably about it, or at least talk about it with you guys on stream whenever we can. Um, it says, in honor of our holiday celebration, the fjords port was decorated and the appearance of the Santa's gift containers was updated, which which is pretty cool. I like fjords because it's bright and sunny and you can see everything. Um, this 
will be darker, but it will be pretty beautiful. I actually think they did a good job decorating this. There's fireworks. Um, Santa's sleigh, I think, flies by uh, right here. You can kind of see the sleigh over the... Oh, you guys can't see where my mouse is. But right there in the middle above the water, you can see Santa and his reindeer flying by. That's pretty cool. Christmas village all lit up. Looks pretty. This is what the Santa's gift containers look like. They look like a, uh, a nice little Christmas village house, which is kind of cool. Um, so good job, art team. We are appreciative. Kato says the Fjord's music was very calming if you were stressed out. That's true. I do enjoy the holiday music that they give us, which is pretty exciting. Uh, map changes. This is actually an interesting one, too. And I had to read this sentence a couple of times to fully understand this. At the beginning of the battle, the distribution of ships on the flanks and in the center of the map will be more uh, even between the teams. Submarines will spawn closer to the opposite side of the map and more often on the flanks. This is actually something I talked about a long time ago, which was uh, basically um, submarines, because of their nature, would be more interesting if they spawned a little closer to the enemy. And it looks like we're going to get that feature. I don't know if that's going to be good or bad. I guess we'll see. I think that's going to allow a lot of sub players to get into trouble, but it also might allow sub players to get into the battle about the same time as the rest of their counterparts who can shoot longer distances. All right, so the next thing is this, and it's pretty cool. 40 new ships have been added to the Santa's Gift, Santa's Big Gift, and the Santa's Mega Gift containers. And this is the list. Somebody, uh, one of our wonderful Discord Discordians, posted this in the Clyde Plays Discord earlier today when I wasn't able to read this article. And uh, it was nice for me to take a pick at this, or a peek at this. Take a look at this. There's a bunch of ships on here. That's fine. I want to call out a few that I think are particularly interesting. Um, number one, Fujin Kamikaze and Kamikaze R. These ships were in Santa containers a long time ago, and then they have been missing for a very long time. The fact that these are here now is going to make them more available to more players. These are a very powerful set of tier five destroyers that I think people would be interested in. That's pretty cool. Grimiashi, I think, has been gone for one year. I think they pulled it last year, um, but I think it was in there two years ago. My memory could be a little foggy on this, but that is another ship that's been gone, but it's nice to see that back for players who are interested in Grimiashi. Um, Black doesn't surprise me. We, we got Black back over the summer, so here she is. Sherman doesn't surprise me, Kaba, Alvaro. Anchorage is a dockyard ship. Odin is a dockyard ship. Heisen is a dockyard ship. These are ships that haven't been in the game for a very, very long time. And so, or haven't been available, I should say, in the game at all. Um, and so to see them come in and have us be able to get dockyard ships, I believe this is the first time that's been done with the exception of, as Scott pointed out to me earlier today, the Puerto Rico ship being brought back to a dockyard for a second time. That's not the same as having it come in for some other way where you can just grab it. Uh, you still had to grind through a dockyard or pay through a dockyard. And so for anybody who didn't get these ships before, you'll have the opportunity to scoop them up now. Um, if we look at the tier eight, nine list, uh, I don't know that there's anything in here that's... Oh, the other thing that's interesting, too, is Malta. Malta just now came out. Usually ships that come out this late in the cycle don't wind up in our Santa boxes. But for anybody who didn't get Malta for either cash or coal so far, um, that is an, there's an opportunity for you to grab it in a Santa box, which is kind of a surprise to me, actually. Um, over here in the Tier 8 and 9 list, I don't know if there's anything in here that really surprises me. I think um, Carnot, I was kind of surprised Carnot wasn't already in there, but she wasn't. And so for anybody who's been holding out on Carnot, uh, that might be an interesting one to add to your collection. I like seeing Hornet in there. That's a fun uh, CV. Um, Kearsarge, things like that. And of course, our two new submarines, I-56 and S-189. And then down here in the Tier 5 through 7 list, again, nothing here that's a real shocker for me. Um... The only one that I'm lacking from this list is Collingwood. So that's kind of cool to see that one become available. There may be some folks here who are interested in scooping up one of these boats as well. So new ships for the Santa's Big and Mega and Normal Gift containers. We also have some updated changes coming for the Super Container Drops. 22 new ships that are added. And one ship that has been removed is Imperator Nikolai I, which really bums me out, actually. I still don't have an Imperator Nikolai, and it seems as though now I will not be able to get one. There's no path, I think, that allows me to get an Imperator Nikolai um, as, we, as we speak today. So I'm interested in, uh, you know, obviously scooping up a Kamikaze R, whether I do that with a Santa box or a super container. 
Uh, time will tell. It'll probably be a Santa box for me, though, is, is my guess. But some changes to what's going on in super containers. Uh, our final story of the night is this story right here. Two ships they announced on the World of Warships Discord yesterday. First is the Duplex. Uh, according to Maconiel, the French community manager at Wargaming in Prague, it is Duplex, not Dupli or Duple or Duplo. It is, uh, you say the X, which I thought was crazy because I didn't think they ever said the X, but that shows what I know about French, which ain't much. Um, Duplex here is a heavy cruiser with 203 main battery gun, 203 millimeter main battery guns, not 203 main battery guns. That would be insane. Uh, they are very similar to the guns on the Algerie, if you're familiar with that ship, uh, which is the tier seven tech line ship. This is at tier six. She's got light armor. She's going to need to angle and be careful of large caliber shells that are coming at her. Uh, she does look like she'll be kind of interesting. If we take a look at the ship's stats, uh, basic things about 35,000 hit points, which is not abnormal. Almost 17 kilometers range, which is decent. I think this will be a fun ship if you enjoy things like DeGrasse. I think this might be similar. It's like a 203 version of that ship. But of course, obviously, um, with a slower reload. 820 meters per second for the shells as they go out. 15% fire chance, things of that nature. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, nine kilometer torpedoes with a 60 knot speed. That is the duplex. And then last but not least, the German destroyer Z42. I'm really interested in this one. And it seems as though a lot of people are. Z42 is a German premium destroyer at tier 10. Kind of, they've been describing her as a German Haragumo. So 19,700 hit points, uh, 10 105 millimeter guns with a 12.6 kilometer range. Uh, and an initial velocity of 900 meters per second, 5% fire chance with a 30, or uh, excuse me, a 26 millimeter HE penetration. So I think this will be an interesting ship. I think a lot of people are closely watching this one. I've seen some folks speculating already that it will be nerfed. Uh, these numbers may not be final. Remember, these are the numbers as we go into testing, not as we come out. Uh, but I am excited about Z42 as I am often excited about a great many destroyers. And uh, I hope that you guys are too. This one comes with a damage control party, short burst smoke generator. So the 40 second dispersion time smoke, uh, engine boost, and a hydroacoustic search that has a six kilometer range for detecting ships, four kilometers for torpedoes. So excellent German hydros, just like we expect from a lot of German ships. And that I think is all of the news that I have to share with you guys tonight. Thank you so much for watching the news. If you're watching this later on YouTube, of course, we would love to have you come and hang out with us live on Twitch where we do this stuff for realsies. If you're watching it with us on Twitch right now, we're going to go back and play a couple of battles, and I cannot wait to get into a few more scraps. We're playing all of the black ships tonight. Uh, a little preview of what's coming in the Black Friday sale. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And uh, let's get back to some battles here. I hit the wrong button. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys later. This has been the news on Clyde Plays Live.